Hi everyone, welcome to Edison Bob. Today we talk about free bottlenecks for .summer growth. So these are free themes, free common issues that .summer, the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystems currently have that we need to solve in order to unlock the next stage of growth. Uh, and these are bridges and channels, explorers, and wallets and user experience. And we will go through all three of them today. So I am a believer in bottleneck theory. And so this is a fancy way of saying that if you have a system, a company, an ecosystem, there are certain bottlenecks that you're going to hit. And in order to unlock the next stage of growth, you need to fix the bottlenecks. And so we're going through them in the order that I present them here. And the first and foremost one are bridges and channels. And we will do some drawings today to give you a rough understanding of what's going on here. So these are my notes, but uh, let's start off. And we are going to take the Kusama ecosystem as an example today, because it is a bit more developed than the Polkadot ecosystem already. And so we have a few parachains already, and we are picking out a few of them. So let's start out with the Moon River parachain. Whoops. Uh, so the Moon River parachain. It's an EVM compatible chain, and so it gives us smart contract uh, capabilities. Uh, then we have Karura. We have also, so Karura is a DEX. We have State Mine which is a common good parachain, so it offers balances. And then we have Bifrost. And I'm picking out those three because uh, they have something very special in common that we're now going to look at um, that other parachains don't have. And I'm going to pick a few other first to let you guess a little bit. Okay, let's say we have also Fala here. Uh, Fala is like a compute system. And then we have Kilt its identity, uh, and let's pick Altair, because it's also a DeFi platform. Okay, now my question to you is, what do those three have in common that the others don't? And the answer is those three have opened channels to each other. So Moon River and StateMine have opened a channel to each other, and they can transfer tokens. And the same is true for Moon River and Karura. Uh, no, that's not the case, I think. But uh, we have Karura and Bifrost. We have Karura and Statement. We have Bifrost and Statement. And maybe I'm missing some, but this should be the case. And recently, we also had the proposal from, I think it was Basilisk. Basilisk. Oops. That's right. So Basilisk uh, also made a proposal to open a connection here to statement. Okay, so this is the state uh, of channels. And what does this mean? When we have channels, this means value can flow through the system. Um, and this is very important because only when there is economic activity, uh, there can be additional value generated. Value that is no, not only existing in the system. So let's take Fala, for example. Fala is this compute, uh, cloud compute, anonymous cloud compute, or decentralized cloud compute platform. Um, and it has value on its own, but it would have much, much more value if it would be connected to other parachains. Uh, please also keep in mind, I'm not aware of everything that's going on. So if I'm like, if they already have plans to connect or they're, if they're already connecting or so, <clears throat> Um, please don't take it against me. But so this is the this is the general idea. The more connections you have, the more economic value can you uh, you can unlock. Okay. Then there is a special situation for Moon River here because Moon River has bridges to the rest of the world. So let's say to the Ether, uh, let's say to the Ethereum ecosystem and so on because they have smart contract functionality. And so all of the other uh, bridges that are developed in the Ethereum ecosystem and compatible systems uh, can already be tapped. 
Um, but the state as we have it right now is that these are connected parachains and then we have a lot of other parachains here, even more, um, that are not yet connected to all of this. And so when we hear people complain that Dotsama has not yet delivered or it's under price or whatever, um, in my opinion, the main reason is that the original promise of sub substrate technology is not even showing yet because the main promise of uh, substrate. So the, the parachain relay chain concept is that it is offering interoperability. And we are only at the brink of that. And so the technology that is powering all of those connections, the yellow lines, the channels to each other, this is X, C, N technology. And so it means cross consensus messaging. It means that a message uh, let's say, uh, let's say you are doing a trade somewhere on Bifrost and you, you want to swap a token or let's say you want to send it over to Karura. The way that you do this is with cross consensus messaging. And so XCM is a format developed by Parity and I assume Web3 uh, and it's the message format that uh, should leverage the trust umbrella that Kusama is offering. So Kusama is offering a trust umbrella for the whole ecosystem here, uh, like also all of the other parachains. And so they can trust each other to, to have this, to, to have the same, uh, guarantees on that blocks are correctly produced. And so when XCM is offering is messages and transactions flowing through the system. And so at the moment, XCM is existing at, I think we had a version zero and we had a version one. And I think at the moment we are at version two. Um, and so what I think I have seen Gavin would state is that version number zero will be obsolete soon and even version number one will be obsolete soon. So they are already uh, going on to an upgrade path to upgrade it to better and better versions. And so this is bleeding edge technology. This is very new. And so we haven't really seen the true effects of this yet. We, we are seeing these first parachains. They are going first. They are taking the extra effort to already be able to connect to be first adopters. Um, and I think they will be rewarded by this. But this is the first bottleneck for the summer growth that we are progressing on this front, that more channels are being opened. And not only the existing bridges that we have yet, but that other parachains. So for example, Picasso and Darwinia will be offering this. Uh, so we have uh, Picasso, DeFi platform, great people uh, that uh, are offering composability. And then we have Davinia, which is a bridge parachain. So Davinia, they are offering also uh, to have bridges to our ecosystems. So there will be bridges, there will be bridges. Uh, and in the best case, we will have bridges everywhere because when you have a lot of economic activity going through, your system, you are very central on the economic ladder. And so let's say uh, XM is further developed. What we will have is a situation where we, for example, can have a cross consensus message coming in to the vineyard and they are saying, okay, this is something that needs to put into the hands of Picasso. Uh, Picasso is offering uh, yield strategies that compose of sending a message to Bifrost and to Karura and to Altair. They are sending tokens uh, and then when everything is gathered, maybe they will connect and send it over to Ethereum. That is the idea of XCM, that you have a lot of uh, possibilities and composability in the way that you send messages across the network. And this is actually the true promise of uh, substrate technology and of XCM and Polkadot and Kusama, that you will have this network of messages uh, flowing through the ecosystem, and actually combining parachains uh, in a truly sophisticated manner. So why don't we have this yet? 
Why is it not the case? Uh, the main reason is that it's a technological integration effort. So every team needs to integrate uh, with the technology and then you have to have governance action. And it is a lot of work. Uh, it's a complicated manner. Uh, number one, because it's bleeding edge, but also because it is very new. Um, and there are not a lot of experts yet. So if you want to earn money and get a place in a uh, get a place in a career in the .sama ecosystem in 2022 and further down uh, you should look into XM because it's a really cool new technology um, and one prediction I'm making in a few years uh, every parachain will have uh, their own API API page uh, sort of an XM page where you can look up what services this parachain can offer and which XCM messages you will need to send to that parachain in order to consume the services. And we will see a rich ecosystem of parachains that are offering their XCM services. And at a certain point, you might not even know that you're using a certain parachain. You're just paying the fees and that parachain will be used. And that is the true promise of XCM. Okay, that is number one, bridges and channels. Uh, with the promises of interoperability and user experience. And when we unlock that, and it's a gradual experience, it will go step after step, another bridge, another channel, day after day. Um, this is the biggest driver for adoption growth for our whole ecosystem. Um, and when we uh, will be having more of those bridges and channels and more activity between chains, the next issues will be those of explorers and of wallets. So this comes after bridges and channels. Um, let me take a sip of water. Okay, explorers. What's the idea here? Why do we need better explorers? This was actually recently raised and I was made aware of this by Joe Petrovsky, the project lead of the state mine parachain. Um, and let me give you a very ex easy example. Um, so you see this is uh, this is the Alice and Bob account. You can see it on Subscan. And so you see a lot of the transactions I recently performed, but actually it's not transactions, it's extrinsics. So it's action, actions I have taken to perform certain activities uh, on Kusama. And you can see here XCM palette. So I have been calling the XCM palette and I've been call, I've been sending a call to Parachain 2000. So what does this mean? Uh, it looks like I've sent some uh, KSM to a parachain, apparently. Um, but you cannot really read it from that transaction. It doesn't really make any sense if you're not an experienced developer or IT person. Uh, you have to read through that extrinsic and it doesn't really make any sense to you, uh, except if you do a lot of research and try to really understand what's happening. So this information here is not telling me at all, giving me no information at all, that I'm actually was sending KSM to the Karura parachain. I can't read it from here. And the reason is that XM is so new and it's just being integrated at that moment that there are no developed explorers that can give you that information in a transparent manner. And so this is the next big bottleneck uh, for ecosystem growth is that you need to have transparency in your transactions. You need, really need to understand what is happening. And this is a rather technical issue, but uh, because each parachain is implementing this in a different way, they can write their own modules we call them pallets and when they're writing their own modules this means that every explorer needs to understand each parachain in a different way and so this is taking time and effort um, an extrinsic is not a parachain extrinsic is an action i'm taking on one parachain and there might be several extrinsics involved in the transfer or in a single transaction and also, so yeah, this is the main reason. You cannot really inspect it yet properly and we need this uh, solved also that more developers can onboard and understand what is going on and also simple people can understand and onboard what's going on. Okay, number three, and this is basically a very similar issue. It's not the same issue, but a similar issue to explorers, but we need better tools to sign a transaction. Uh, and to understand what's going on on the system. And to give you an example, so this is what, oops, 
This is what Polkadot.js, uh, the browse extension currently looks like when you want to send a transaction. So it's very loaded. Uh, you need uh, time to get used to it. Um, and then if you're unlucky, you don't even have the proper metadata and you, you cannot even see what's going on. And so you, you need to get trained to use Polkadot.js. You need to watch training videos to even understand what you have to do. So it's, really, really, really not very user-friendly. It needs to get better. And this is a big potential for people to go in and uh, develop better wallets. And we're currently aware of Talisman and Nova Wallet. And so I took, a, I took an image from the recent blog post from Talisman. And the idea is that each transaction actually means something different. And so it should give you the possibility to understand it from a, a simple look should look at the dialogue that is asking you to sign a transaction and you should know immediately what it means and if you want to do this or not. Also, different transactions require different trust assumptions. For example, publishing an article, you might not want to each time sign the transaction for that. Maybe you trust your wallet or you trust your wallet to um, not do anything stupid about this. And if something stupid happens, it wouldn't be so bad uh, that you have a problem with that. So uh, maybe publishing an article is not requires not so much trust as swapping tokens, which has monetary implications uh, and so on. So the idea here is to get more user friendly and over time get a system that allows you to uh, to facilitate all of those complexity and put it into more simple terms because the average user should not be expected to understand all of the complexity that is going on here. Yeah, it's just too complicated to look at it every day. What you want is a simple user interface, a simple transaction that says, do this, and there could be a range of activities behind it that employ five different parachains. If it is condensed into a single transaction, to a single activity where most users can deal with, this is the real onboarding mechanism, the real issue that could help us grow the ecosystem. Okay, this was my ramble for today. Free bottlenecks for the summer growth, bridges and channels, explorers, wallets and UX. And I think if you're looking for an opportunity to improve the ecosystem um, or talk about this or develop something, these are your chances at the moment. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hit the subscribe button, follow me on Twitter, do the stuff. See you soon.